Hello friends, welcome to the another video of this key clock series. In my previous videos, I have explained uh, what is key clock, what how how to install key clock, how to create clients, how to create roles. About I have uh, explained about uh, protocol mappers. I have explained about uh, groups. So if anyone wants to learn about uh, my previous video, they can. Uh, uh, you can find the link on my description and in fact in this video I am going to speak about client scope. So let's start the video and uh, I will be speaking about client scope, what is client scope, how to configure client scope and why it is required. Now let me show my existing configuration which uh, it's already there. So I have a customer ream. I have created a client also MS department. It has some uh, client specific roles. Okay. And uh, next thing is we have some ream roles also we can see here. And we have some three users also. And this user has some attribute also. Okay. And now coming to the main point why client scope is required. Okay. Before that, uh, let me show you how the access token looks like. Okay, so we can see the access token in a new way. You go to the client, go to client scope, click on evaluate tab, and B2B user test. And then you can see here effective what are the effective protocol mappers are applied here. Okay, and you can see this is the type the new thing in my last video we have created. DOB is the protocol mapper that we have created. Okay, so these are the by default protocol mapper which are applied here. So this is the effective role scope mapping applied here. So this is the role which is applied. This is the role which is applied because this is mapped to the user. And we can see the access token here. Okay, in access token, we can see this uh, roles are applied. This roles are applied. Okay. And uh, we can see here DOB and this type is applied. Okay, so let me show you the protocol mapper. If we go to the client MS department, we go to the client scope MS department dedicated. This is by default it is created, and these are you can see email is by default, so email will come by default in the access token. Okay. Profile will come default, rules will come default, web origin will come default. Okay, and let me show you this one. So, client ID, host, and client IP address, these are by default. So, this is the type we created it last time. User attribute is type. So, it will be we have option to add it to the token also, like that uh, we can control. So, this is the last time we uh, have done. And uh, now, coming to the point, why actually? The client scope is required. Now, coming to the point of why client scope is required. So, suppose we want to add some information to the access token. So, we have seen that uh, with the protocol mapper, uh, we can add, uh, we can create a new protocol mapper and we can add the information to the token. Like, for example, in MS department, if you go to client uh, scope and here I have added type and the DOB protocol mapper to this specific uh, thing. But let's suppose we have a requirement that uh, every client we create and uh, for that some some basic information need to be added. Like uh, for every new client I create, this type and the DOB uh, protocol mapper should be applied to every client. And this comes with like if we have some many clients okay so and if we have a less client then on every client we need to go and we need to add a specific protocol mapper to each client but to address this problem if we have a mini client the client scope is used so so from here we can create a client scope okay we can give the name uh, uh, we don't need to change anything. Consent screen include in token scope. We need to make it yes. So I have created one uh, uh, client scope. 
and you can see this one department scope i have created type is default and uh, optional is i will explain later what is optional so right now let's keep it uh, default display on consent screen on okay include in token scope we can see here we can uh, what is the help we can see and we can create it and now once we create we can see some protocol uh, mapper uh, tab is enabled so here for one scope for this scope we can add as many protocol mapper we can so one mapper we have created it in the name of a contract so user attribute contract contract string id token yes we can make it yes multi valued also we made it yes okay so i will explain everything is yes and we have created the uh, protocol mapper okay and we can create as many protocol mapper as we can and uh, if any new client we are creating it by default this department scope uh, scope will be included in the uh, like in the scope it will automatically appear and on this contract mapper will be automatically means like uh, this thing will be automatically part of the access token and uh, in the scope also we can assign some role so i have created a new role like a department role okay let me assign it and this role also will be part of uh, automatically it will be part of the token so it is like a scope is a combination of mapper and the rules uh, scope mapping we can say okay and uh, let me go to the client yeah before showing the client uh, let me show you the user first you can see this user attribute so contract contract so two times we added because we have specified the protocol mapper as multi-value and also i have specified one role department role dept role i will explain why okay for that again let me go back to client scope okay here everything same protocol mapper there is no change okay and in the scope so here we can map the rules also but we can see if there is a role scope mapping defined user must be a member of at least one of the rules so that's why I have kept this role here and uh, for that user also I have given the role. Okay. And let me go back for the manager also. We can see attribute 11, 12 and there is no role mapping. So I will show you the difference. Okay. Let me go to client. This is the existing client. Role scope mapping, nothing is there. So we can add it like this department scope. But for the we can add this as a default or optional also for any new client we are creating it it will come as a default okay we'll go to evaluate okay and we have to refresh it sometimes it doesn't reflect okay maybe we need to save it here again Yes, so sometimes you need to search it again to so that uh, client scope is reflected again. So, but it will not happen. Uh, right? So, let's go to evaluate tab again. Yes, so you can see the contract department scope uh, is added here. Now let me search that user B2B test and then let's go to access token. And here we can see the 1314 is coming here the contract. Okay, because we have specified multi value attribute. Now let's check the other user manager. manager. Okay, let's go to access token again. And now you can see you won't be able to, you can see uh, there is no contract because I have specified that. Let me explain again. So here we can go to scope mapping, but the user must be a member of at least one of the roles. Okay, because the manager is not part of a department role, so that's why we are not able to see the uh, 
the contract value in the token so let me add the department role to assign to the manager and the department role we have assigned now let's go back to client again to scope mapping evaluate and now manager okay and now we will be able to see the change okay so contract we can see contract 11 and 12 are added and here the department role is by default or it will automatically is added here okay and with this client scope we can add any number of uh, mappers here or any number of roles which which will be automatically part of the token and from here we can uh, control and in the protocol mapper also where uh, multi-valued or single valued uh, we can control i can show you one more thing we can do something like that also attributes dot the attributes dot contract let me save it we'll go to clients again okay p 2 p test generated access to now you can see it is coming in that way it's like if we want at multiple level like uh, after attributes contract is there and after contracts some more uh, we can uh, we want to add uh, one more protocol user attribute button so we can add it so in this way we can control what all uh, user attributes we can map it to the user token and that's the difference between uh, uh, protocol mapper pro uh, means like going to the client and adding a specific control uh, protocol mapper and uh, or defining as a scope so uh, that's all about uh, scopes and in the next videos i will be coming up with some more topic like what is password plus how to do password plus how to integrate with uh, spring boot how to integrate with uh, angular or like how to integrate with next dot so these things uh, i come up with uh, my next videos okay thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe the channel so that you can get a notification whenever any next videos are coming thank you